Well, hello there. How are you doing today? Do you feel like doing a little bit of DIYing with me? Well, come on in. Let's get started. What do I have going on for you for today? Well, I can't even believe I'm saying it, but I am fall, autumn, it's right around the corner. So today I thought I'd bring to you some fall favorites that I think you are absolutely gonna love. I'm gonna keep this short and sweet. I'm gonna quit my gabbing. Let's jump into it and let's do some Dollar Tree fall DIYing on a budget. Cause why not? Cause that's what we do here. Let's get to it. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? You'll want to stick around to the end of the video to see if it's your creation that's being featured in today's video. When you see these, I'm thinking you might want to pick up more than just one. For this first pumpkin, I'm going to be using this thicker yarn. This is one I had in my stash. You're going to want to do it with two strands at a time. And I'm going to take these strands and I'm going to weave it in and out and around each of the wires of the pumpkin. Ask me how long these strands are. I really have no clue. I'm actually keeping the yarn connected to the skein and I'm using the piece that's on the outside of the skein and the piece that's on the inside so I can do this two strands thick. So again, as I do this, you can see that I am wrapping the yarn around each of the wires. I'm not tying it in a knot. I'm just wrapping it around the yarn, then going to the next wire, wrapping it around that one until I've gone the full length of my pumpkin. Once I've fully gone across, if you take the ends of your yarn, you can kind of tug on them and tighten up that row. When cutting the yarn after each row, I left just enough yarn so I could flip my pumpkin over and hot glue those ends to the back so it doesn't come unraveled. You see me going on to the second row here and really this is gonna play out the same way for every row after this. The one thing I will say is that when you are doing this, you wanna get the row you're working on as close to the row above it as you can so that way as little of the wire wreath form shows. It may take you about an hour to do this, I'm not gonna lie, but this is one of those projects where you can sit on the couch, you can put your pumpkin wreath form on your lap, and you can just weave away watching whatever great movie it is that you feel like watching. I personally will watch a Hallmark movie because I love Hallmark. You choose your movie and weave yarn on your pumpkin wreath form. And with the magic of video, just like that, Look at that, we are just about halfway done with this. I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna keep watching my movie. This yarn, it's not very expensive. You can get it at Walmart for fairly inexpensive. You'll see around that outside edge, I did add a piece just to cover up the edge. For the stem, I'm gonna use some sticks that I found in my front yard that fell from a tree. Taking some wire cutters, I'm just gonna cut them to size here to the size of the stem up there I wanted to add just a bit of a rustic feel to this. And I feel like you can do that by using things like sticks. I'm sure you've got a tree or a bush. It's about that time. So just take a couple branches off of it. You'll never notice and add it to your DIY. Right? It looks cool, doesn't it? And we got it in our front yard. Have you seen these new fall floral picks at Dollar Tree? Of course you have it. Everybody has. This is going to add the perfect pop of color that this DIY needs. I just love this blue. I was waiting to incorporate it into a DIY and this is just the perfect one to do that. So I'm going to use the leaves on it, a couple of the pom-poms. Since this is a fall DIY, I feel like fall screams raffia instead of twine, but raffia it can be kind of a pain to work with right it's unmanageable it's hard it's stiff it's bent how do you even make a beautiful bow out of raffia when it looks like this easy soak it in some water it'll straighten right out look at that set it in the sun you're good to go and look at the raffia bow that i have made for the top of my modern rustic pumpkin is that even a thing modern rustic yeah and you're gonna wanna add some of those berries too. And this here is my first pumpkin DIY using 
those pumpkin wire wreath forms that you're gonna wanna get more than one of at Dollar Tree. This new orange tool with the white speckles is everything. I'm kind of obsessed. I picked up three of them for this DIY. This DIY is very similar to that of the yarn one that we just did, only it's not because we are simply going to just weave the tool in and out of each of the wires and hot glue the ends to the back. Now when doing this, you are gonna wanna use a low temperature hot glue gun so you don't burn the heck out of your fingers. Now, another tip when doing this, every row that you do, you're going to alternate it. So on the wires that you went under, you're gonna go over. The wires that you went over on, you're gonna go under. So that way it will cover up more of, I guess, the wire form. So you can see here on this row exactly how I'm doing it, it alternates. Again, as you do this, when you can pull those edges and make it tighter, and as you do it, you're gonna wanna push that tooling up as close to the row above it as you can get it, because it's just gonna add to the look of this pumpkin. Like I said, I used three spools of this tool. There are so many different colors that you can really get creative with. I was feeling the orange. So you can see here just how it's looking. And as you do each row, you are going to wanna to finish it off with the hot glue and hot glue it to the back. I know, right? Now you see why I'm obsessed with this tool. I love it. I also picked up a couple of the green burlap leaves. Are these green or brown? I felt like they were green, but they're coming across brown. They're looking amazing with this orange, and I did do a twig stem on this one as well. I didn't show it. It's just gonna add to that rustic feel. If you wanna add burlap, if you wanna do it with twine, you can do that, but I love adding just a bit of the outdoors to it. And this one too, I finished off with a raffia bow because I straightened it already, so why not? And look at the outcome. Even though the wire from the form shows, I feel like this is such a fun piece to display this fall. Wire cutters are the way to go for this next DIY because you need to cut through the wire. You can do it either on the top or the bottom of the form because we're gonna add some of Dollar Tree's wood beads to this. Dollar Tree's got square and round ones. You're getting a lot on these strands for $1.25, so it's a pretty great buy. I don't need the string, I just want the beads. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove the beads from the string because these beads, they're gonna go on each of the wires on the pumpkin form. How fun is that? Now I'm alternating between the square and the round. Why? Because I'm using what I had in my stash. I really don't want to buy anything extra that I don't need. I just want to use up what I do have to kind of cut down on cost. And I tell you, when I purged my garage and cleaned all my craft supplies out, I really found things that I had been looking for that I could never find. So now I have the chance to use them. I will tell you that using the beads at Dollar Tree that come on these strands is definitely the way to go because it took one strand per wire piece on the pumpkin form, if that makes any sense. And so I had a total of 10. I had five square, five round, and I had some left over. And so once I go ahead and strand the beads onto the wire, you are going to wanna hot glue the tip of the wire to the top. And I found that just by hot gluing the bead, the last bead to the wire, that kind of did the trick and kept it in place. You may recognize this fabric. I used it in my mystery box challenge. I have a ton of it. It was a dollar a yard. I couldn't resist. I cut several eight inch long strips by two inches wide for this next step. Now I will tell you that, um, well, you'll just have to wait and see, Never mind. I cut several of them. With these strips, I thought at the time that it was going to be cute to wrap it around the outside of, I guess, the beaded part of this form. I kind of wanted to add some color. I thought it would give it kind of that country quilted rustic look. And so just by, I guess, folding the strip in half and pulling the tails through the loop, is how you can easily tie fabric strips onto a wreath form. And so I really had this vision of what I thought it was gonna look like if I put these strips along the whole outside 
of the form. You can see it kind of looked cute, but I was feeling like, gosh, these are kind of long. I'm not sure if I'm feeling it. Once I got it done, I was like, okay, do I like this? I was trying to convince myself. I decided to go ahead and go on with my project. The stem, it needs to be burlap. Have you seen these burlap rolls at Dollar Tree by Crafter Square? It is a great quality burlap. So I cut a small piece and just decided to hot glue it, wrapping it around the stem itself. This burlap, well, it makes for the perfect rustic bow to add to the base of the stem. I'm gonna say that this is a cute piece, but it doesn't look like a pumpkin. I feel like the fabric was too long. It took away from it. It just looks like I don't even know what, but it doesn't look like a pumpkin. So I am not afraid to say that this was not a winner. So I went back to my craft room because I didn't want to scrap this DIY. I figured instead of scrapping the whole DIY, I'd scrap the fabric. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the long job of removing each of the fabric strips. Really, it didn't take all that long. You can see that it's coming off pretty quickly. And since I had a couple of extra strands of beads and some leftovers, I decided to just go ahead and hot glue these beads to the outside wire there. Why am I hot gluing them? I'm hot gluing them because if you cut the wire even more, it's going to really jeopardize the integrity of this wreath form. And so I figured the easiest way to do the surrounding wire would be just to hot glue the beads on and because I had more round beads than I had square beads that's what I'm going with and there we have it the beads stayed on pretty well I did flip it over to the back side and reinforce the beads a bit more with some hot glue along the edge of the wire let's take a look at the before and after oh yes I am much more happy with it now I'm not afraid to go back and try, try again to get a DIY to look the way I want it to look. Sometimes they don't always turn out the way I envision them. For this next DIY, yep, yeah, this is a Dollar Tree poster board. That's what we need. Have you seen these plastic window decor pieces that have a suction cup on them at the top? Pretty cool, I was loving the design. Flipping it over on the back side, I'm gonna use some of Loctite spray adhesive this is a repositionable spray adhesive. It's gonna work perfect. Dollar Tree's got a spray adhesive. I guarantee you it'll work for this. I'm gonna add here my window plastic decor piece. Yeah, onto the poster board. I'm using poster board because it's gonna give it stability. If you wanna use cardboard, you can. It's just thicker and harder to cut through. And I'm really just kind of trying to save my wrist. Using a dry erase pen, I'm gonna go ahead and trace the outside of the form why am I using a dry erase pen? Because it'll erase off of the plastic image when I'm done. A bit of a tip, when you're cutting something like this that you traced, when I traced it, I traced along the outside of the wreath form, which means that what I traced is going to be a couple centimeters bigger than the wreath form itself. So when cutting it, you either want to cut directly on the line or right inside the line to get a perfect fit. The image wasn't quite big enough. There were a couple of spots on each side here where the white poster board was showing. So I just took some of the scrap pieces from the outside of the image that I cut off and just did a bit of patchwork. It's not gonna show. I feel like it would have showed more had I left the poster board. And so just doing the patchwork, I think it's just gonna kind of blend in and nobody's gonna be none the wiser. I found the easiest way to attach the image to the wreath form itself was to do it in the spots where the wires come up and around and meet the frame of the form. These wreath forms are kind of warped and so if you try to attach the full frame to the image it didn't really stay and it kind of warped the picture. So just do it on each of those tips where the wires meet the frame and your image is going to look perfect. This here is a thicker cord that you can get at Walmart for about $3.98. You're getting 100 and what is that, 35 feet for about $4. It's a thicker twine and sometimes you just need a thicker twine, like in this case. I thought it'd be fun to cover up the wire with this twine, kind of giving it that rustic feel that I love. If you don't want to add the twine, you don't have to, but 
Again, I'm looking for that rustic feel, that rustic fall feel, and I think that this is a good way to do that and to disguise the wires themselves. And it is best to cover the framing of the pumpkin form after you've done the wires because then it kind of disguises the ends of the twine that you covered, I guess, those outer wires with. And again, on the top, because I love just the feel and the look of adding these twigs to the stem. I'm a creature of habit. I'm a creature of repetition. When I like something, I use it. And I love these stems on the top of the pumpkin stem. Dollar Tree's got this beautiful orange wired burlap ribbon that I figured would bring out some of the orange in the image and make the perfect bow for the stem. But to this bow, I wanted to add some of these fun floral fall sunflowers. Say that three times real fast. These are flowers that you can get at Walmart. Walmart's got an amazing selection of fall flowers and they range from 98 cents to $1.98 and up. This was one that came on a pick that was $1.97. The leaves are gorgeous on it, so just by disconnecting it or cutting off all the pieces, you can then add it to something like a wreath and it makes the perfect floral addition to it. I really love those window images at Dollar Tree. I feel like adding it to this pumpkin form really made this a fun fall decor piece. For today's DIY, you're gonna wanna pick up four of these slatted autumn leaves. My color choices are these here colors by Hello Hobby. I'm gonna start off by giving these maple leaves a good couple coats of this dark chocolate brown by Hello Hobby, and I'm gonna do that to all four of the leaves. Once I've got the coverage that I'm happy with, when I'm applying that last coat of the dark chocolate brown, while it's wet, I'm then gonna go in with that pumpkin orange and I'm gonna do kind of a dry brush stroke over that wet brown paint. This is gonna give us a nice blended look. It's gonna free up time because we're not gonna have to go in and sand, I guess, our piece to soften up the look. And so just by applying that accent color while your base coat is wet, it's really gonna help you achieve the same look. And this would be the end result of what your maple leaves should look like. Some texture is needed for the stem of this leaf, and I'm gonna do that using this burlap that you can get at Dollar Tree. Oh, look there, I must have painted the stem. Why I left it unpainted? Not quite sure, but I painted it. Now, because I wanna do this quick, I'm gonna outline the stem with some hot glue instead of using Mod Podge. Place that burlap right on top and using this silicone, I guess, face mask applicator. Yeah, it's coming up here. Oh, look, there it is. I'm gonna press down the burlap so I don't burn my fingers. I find that using scissors is the easiest way to cut off the excess burlap in this instance because we didn't use Mod Podge and the burlap isn't stiffened. So I found that it was harder to use the razor than just going in with some scissors. And look at there, texture. Perfect. Yes, I am. I'm gonna go in and add some stitching and I'm using that desert tan to really make this leaf, I guess, pop and really finish it off. We are so not done. This is part two of this DIY. You're gonna need three of the slatted pumpkins. I love this slatted look. I feel like it just adds to the rustic feel of, I guess, a fall and harvest DIY. So because there are three pumpkins, I am going to incorporate the three colors for my fall decor this year, being the aqua, the desert tan, and that pumpkin. To each of these colors, I did add a dot or two of the dark brown. And for those of you who are new to my channel, when you add just a dot or two to a brighter color, it really does kind of help mute out the color, rustic it up a bit. And so, yeah, you can see just how great these pumpkins look. They don't look bright and vibrant. They really have that warm fall feel. To the stems of the pumpkins, I am. I'm gonna go in with that burlap and add some texture to these two. Ah, uh, yes, one of my favorite additions to every DIY. Okay, most DIYs. These Harvest DIY words, if you're getting six of them in a pack, we're gonna use three of them today. Using some of these medium-sized wood beads, I'm gonna adhere these with some hot glue to the back of these DIY harvest wood words that we love because why? Because by adding a bead to these, it is gonna elevate it 
up off of the pumpkins that we're gonna apply it to. And by elevating it, that is adding dimension. And you always wanna try and add dimension and texture to a DIY because I feel like it really elevates your DIY. I'm gonna go in with some hot glue. If you wanna use a wood glue to adhere this word onto the pumpkin, you can. I feel like hot glue is gonna hold up just fine indoors during the fall and harvest season. As I'm putting this on, I'm thinking, oh my word, this is really just getting lost in the pumpkin. Something definitely needs to be done about this because I don't like it. So instead of taking the farm fresh off, I'm just gonna go in and add some dark brown, paint up this word, and there we go. It's gonna do exactly what I need it to do. Ah, uh, yes, much better. I'm happy now. Because there was six of these Fallen Harvest wood words in a pack, I figured, heck, why not add a different one to each pumpkin? So after I did place, I guess, the wood word on the pumpkin, I did go in for each of them and repaint them with the brown. For these pumpkins and maple leaves, you're gonna need some Dollar Tree's decorative nautical rope. This is an eight foot piece that we folded in half to find that center piece. Right along that back part of the pumpkin, I'm gonna run a nice bead of hot glue. And you will see on my rope that I did mark the center because I'm gonna place this first pumpkin right smack in the center so I can get perfect placing and spacing for each of the plaques that I'm gonna place for, I guess, the length of this. So here I'm gonna put my two maple leaves and to each of the plaques, I did add a knot stump just to finish it off. Sorry, I didn't show that, but it's pretty easy to do. Let's go take a look at this all done. For this next garland, I want to add a hanger to it. So to do that, I took several strands of twine, glued it to each side, but this is a mess right here. I want it to have a more finished look, and you can do that just by simply taking some twine and wrapping it around, covering up that hot mess. Look at how easy and nice that looks. Easy way to add a hanger to your garland. Dollar Tree's got some floral wire. They've got it in silver, they've got it in green. You choose. When it came to my floral picks this year, I kind of bounced between Walmart and some of those new colors at Dollar Tree. These floral picks here, you can find at Walmart for 97 cents. This sunflower one, you've probably seen it in a couple of my other DIYs. I am obsessed with it. I feel like this just screams fall and harvest. Dollar Tree has these raffia, are these pumpkin picks? It's got a stem at the top, so I'm not sure, but I love them. They came in three different colors, so I picked up six for this DIY. These miniature pumpkins from Dollar Tree, they come in a three pack. They've got this clip on the back that we are gonna use. It is gonna help us with this garland. To these picks, we don't need this long stem, but we do need a bit of it. So taking my wire cutters, I'm gonna trim it down. It's not that hard to do and definitely using wire cutters is the way to go. Then taking some of my floral wire, I am going to wrap that wire around the rope and my floral pick and I'm gonna do it pretty tightly and this is gonna attach my floral picks to my rope. When attaching your floral picks to the rope, you're gonna wanna put wire in two different spots. One being at the base of your floral pick like I did first and then the second one being in the middle of your floral pick and this is going to help so your flowers set nicely on your rope in essence which is going to be your hanger so when you flip it over you can see how nicely it's going to set and it's not going to look lopsided. I'm good to go by placing my second set of flowers and so I'm gonna go ahead and put this sunflower and I'm gonna overlap it just enough to hide the stem from the flower above it. I wanna add some of these raffia pumpkins. So the stick, it's gotta go. Now with these, I'm adding these because one, I like them and two, I feel like it's a bit different than just adding the flowers. It's gonna be elevated, so it's gonna set higher up from the flowers, which is going to add dimension. Now when I add these, I am not going to use a wire. I'm gonna hit this rope hanger, yeah, with a bunch of hot glue and because this is raffia, I feel like it's gonna stick just fine. And that there is all there is to making your own garland. 
I'm going to say that I spent about $12 to make this garland and it couldn't be any better suited and matched my decor. I just repeated adding my picks, rotating them, and I cannot wait to show you how amazing this looks hung up. Let's go take a look. Who is today's KB Creations Crafter of the Day? It's going out to Dandy Randy, who's bringing to us her recreation of my fall pumpkin plaque. I am loving the colors and the fabric and your twist on this DIY. Thank you so much for sharing your recreation with us today. Which one was your favorite? I don't know that I can choose just one. This time of year is my absolute favorite time of year to start bringing that fall and harvest feeling into my home right before Christmas. I'm not one who decorates year round. I do put out little pieces here and there, but as soon as fall hits, you can most definitely guarantee that I'll be transforming my house, bringing some of those fall and harvest colors into it before Christmas time. I hope you all enjoyed these fall favorites. If you're looking for more DIY inspiration, well, guess what? You can click on the video right over here and it'll take you to some of my past favorites. Until next time, everybody. I hope you have a fantastic day. Happy crafting on a budget. Stay happy, stay safe, stay healthy. But most of all, you know what I'm gonna say. Stay positive, please.